It's no big secret that mobile games are looked down upon by the majority of the gaming community when they have a market that's filled with pay to win cash grabs, false advertising and the same reskinned energy booster gameplay. It's hard to blame anyone for that kind of opinion. But I'm willing to bet that most of you haven't looked beyond that and seen what else is out there. Well, here at Calchemist we're against that kind of anti-consumerism and we want to make gaming great again. But rather than building a firewall and making the developers pay for it, I've instead decided to compile a list of mobile games that are free to play have either very limited or no ads at all, and offer engaging gameplay so that I can share them with you in this playlist, meaning you don't have to sift through a mile long stretch of Clash of Clans clones to find your next hyperfixation. And so I present to you the first in our series, Hobies. At first glance I know you're going to look at this and say Calvin, you're full of shit. As soon as you boot up the game you're already bombarded with deals and promotions and forced to go through a very hand-holdy tutorial that goes on for far longer than necessary, just to explain that these are Hobies, these are keys, Key summon phobies, capture these points, kill the enemy, destroy the heart. At its core it's a very basic game. If you can put the square in the square hole, you can play phobies. But let's back the fun bus up a second. You see that in the top corner? That's me at level 52. And if we take a look on the other side here, this is me in the second highest echelon of rank. As with all the games I'll be shown in this series, I do actually play them and have done for quite some time without ever spending a penny. Let's just repeat that for a second, right? I'm a gold level player without ever spending a penny on this game. But alright, I hear the grumbles and can already smell the phosphorus of your torches as I continue to sound more and more like a Raid Shadow Legends advertisement. Is Forbes the most ambitious RPG project of all time? No, it's not, it's not even an RPG. But it does offer surprisingly deep strategical PvP gameplay that gets better the more you play it. And no, this isn't sponsored, I wish it was, but unfortunately, despite my massive YouTube success, I haven't been offered a partnership deal just yet. So what does make this game so good, and why has it kept me playing on and off for over a year? Well, at first glance it doesn't seem like anything too special. You summon up creatures and capture these little coloured hexes that deal damage to the enemy heart. Or you can just deal damage yourself to it. You win by either killing this heart, or by killing all of the enemy phobies. At first you won't have many of these definitely not Pokemon-like creatures, so you'll be playing on small maps against other new players with pretty much the same experience and team that you have. From what I've seen, everyone starts with the same phobies with maybe one or two little differences, and these are probably going to be K9000, Razor Mouth, Murder Wing, and a few others. Couple that with the maps that only rotate on a weekly basis, and yes, this does make the early game matches feel very samey. But it doesn't take long for you to start getting yourself some packs, and the less phobies you have, the higher your chance of getting something new. So at the start, you're going to be getting a new toy to tickle your serotonin receptors with pretty much every time you open one even the basic ones. And while yes, you can pay for them with real money, earning in-game currency is very easy, often being able to get one or two packs per day. Don't worry about that rarity either, that old pay-to-win gambling chestnut doesn't apply here, with the rarer phobies look cooler, and yes, they have some strong abilities, there's just as many really powerful common drops that will more than do the job for you. Like Baby Snakey here, Molly Bully, Stabby, Daisy and Blinky, who despite being common drops are some of the strongest and most used in my roster. You'll also earn unique phobies every so often just from leveling up, and these get stronger as you continue through the next 10 levels. So your roster is continuously growing, and as it does so, and you've got a good team under your belt, you get access to bigger maps with more unique trap tiles and hazards that you can use against your opponents. Your options begin to expand to counter whatever your opponent is thrown out, and it starts to become a lot more strategic than the original triangle formula that was shown in the beginning. Where Phobie School 101 shows us that there are undead Phobies that heal on hit but can't receive healing from anything else, Machine Phobies that have a high health pool and are immune to poison but take extra damage from the electric attacks, and Dimensional Phobies which deal damage and pull the attacker closer when killed. There is also these basic bitch phobies, which are none of these things, but also suffer no downsides, like a human character in D&D. There's also a small argument to be made that the RPG rule can be applied here too, with the high health tank-like phobies, low health but high damage DPS phobies, and the healers or other support types. Anyone who is familiar with those kinds of team setups will see that similar pattern here in how this game works. But that's just phobies 101, and when I said deep strategy gameplay, by George I meant it. As we get further into Monsters University, we can have regenerating phobies, tunneling phobies, setting up traps, freezing enemies, pushing or pulling opponents into hazards, reflecting damage, coming back from the dead, manipulating the map layout, or just throwing explosive kittens at things, and them kittens are fucking deadly, man. 
There's so many different abilities and combinations that in the time of recording this video, there's no way I could get footage of everything that can be done. Sounds great, right? Or uh, I assume it is, considering you're this far into the video, but it's still a mobile game. And you don't want to be spending all your time playing Forbies when you need to try and keep fighting for that 1.0 KD in Warzone. Well, you sweat lords out there need not worry, and you can go back to drinking G Fuel and arguing about SBMM as much as you like. Just take your turns when you're chilling in the Gulag. See, this is where one of the unique aspects of Forbies comes into play. Unlike most strategy games, you aren't locked into a match for the next two hours unable to look away from it. With Forbies, it acts similarly to how you would see things like Words with Friends. You take your turn and then you go back to the main menu. Meanwhile, your opponent is informed that it's now their turn and they can respond whenever they have time. With in reason, of course. There's a 48 hour time limit and before you jump to assumptions, there's no energy system in place. You can play as many matches as you like, as often as you like. You are, however, capped on the amount of currency you can earn per day, which, depending on your win-loss ratio, is between 1,000 to 1,500 per day. But that is still at least one pack per day, even if you lose every match. You also regularly gain the premium currency for things, which lets you get the super rare packs that have a higher chance of getting ultra rare forbies, or you can get cosmetic items with them, and you're probably going to get one of these per week. Now, that 48 hour response window that I just sort of glossed over earlier does mean that some matches can last for days at a time, and that is precisely why you can have as many games going as you like. I'm usually in around 15 matches at a time and just respond to my turns whenever I have a spare few minutes, like when I'm taking a shit or being carried through another game of Siege. Alternatively, if you don't like all that waiting around for responses and just want an old fashioned Queensberry duel with someone, You've got the arena mode, which gameplay wise is exactly the same, but is presented in the traditional style of both players locked into the match until one either wins or forfeits, slash leaves the game. It doesn't matter which match type you prefer either, both will get you the same type of rewards and will still get you climbing the ladders and reaping the ranks. Give it a try, give it a real try, and if you're still not convinced, feel free to dislike this video and curse my name on your deathbed for daring to suggest that a free mobile game is something good. But if you've enjoyed the game, or maybe if it was just not for you, but want to find more great mobile games, then come back next week where I have a grim dark fantasy RPG to show you. Play similarly to the classic Final Fantasy game. Also, feel free to leave your own suggestions down below for me to try, and maybe they'll make it into a video of their own. With all that coming to a close, I want to thank everyone for watching all the way through to the end, and let you all know that we do a stream every Monday and Thursday, currently playing a survival difficulty playthrough of Days Gone and aiming to get the platinum for it. Also feel free to help the brother out and subscribe to the channel so that I actually can get a sponsorship deal and try to sell you products that you definitely don't need.